Would you like me to put the broccoli in the water? That would be great, yeah. yeah? Thank you. I feel a bit useless otherwise. Can you do a little... Whey! I'm not the best at it, mind you. Hello and welcome to the Ariad Cook Along Show. My name is Hope Ellen and today I'm joined by Chef Arthur, who's going to show us how to make a super easy chicken stir fry. So Arthur, first things first, tell us what ingredients we need. So for the chicken stir fry, the meat we'll be using is, we'll be using two breasts of chicken. The vegetables we'll be using today are broccoli, a carrot, one pepper, you can use yellow pepper, green pepper, I feel like red, it's got the most colour to it. And it's the best. And it's the best, there you go. Uh, we'll also be using one onion. You can use yellow onion, white onion. Again, red is the best. We'll also be using some ginger and garlic, cut down to a, a small paste. And then for flavour, we'll have some chicken stock, some honey, soy sauce, a bit of a little rice vinegar. And then for cooking it, you can use sunflower oil, olive oil, whatever oil you deem worthy, and then some corn flour to thicken the sauce at the end. So let's get started. What do you want me to do first of all? So if you can cut up the chicken breasts for me. Okay. If you just cut them up in thin slices, maybe about a centimetre diameter, that should be all right. I'll give uh, it a whirl. And I'll start with the broccoli. So we're doing this for two people, so that's two, so two breasts. Obviously, if you were doing for more people, you could just increase the quantity. Yeah, the, uh, we're going to be using quite a large wok today. You can use it for maybe four or five people. You can do it for just yourself if you want. It's a quiet night. So about this, is that not right? Should be all right. If you go down along that way. This way? So, yeah, that should be fine, yeah. Just allow it to cook quicker. Okay, we like that. We like things nice and easy and quick. So what are you doing there? So here I'm just cutting up the broccoli. Just cut them up into small florets, so individual, individual pieces. Could you use tender stem broccoli? You can if you want, yeah. You wouldn't need to... What we're going to be doing is we're going to boil them partially just to give it that extra edge. And then if you use tender stem, you could just put it straight in the stir fry. Wouldn't really need boiling as it's quite thin. Okay, that's all. So tell me, we are today at an REF base. I mean, the aprons kind of give it away. Yeah, so what is it that, What is it that you do? So if you couldn't tell already, I'm a chef. Day to day, it requires going to the mess, different times, cooking for, cooking for the people on base. It's hit and miss with how many people there are, which is part of the job. Sometimes, it requires cooking for officers, so it can be... So recently we did, as the King's Coronation, we did a function for about 150 officers. And they, that was more like three-course meal, star main desserts, much more attention to detail. Fancy. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this okay? I feel like the yeah, second that's, breath, yeah, that's, that's why I didn't listen to you and got it the wrong way. No, that's fine. There you go. Right, so stick that, that over. There. I always need to go wash my hands. Keep that airtight. We'll stick that in the fridge while we prepare the rest of this, just health and safety. Uh, and yeah, you can go wash your I'll hands. I'll wash my hands and I'll watch you do the rest of it. Sound good. Yeah. Again. Right. Hands washed. And whilst I was away, you've got me a different board, so I can't just chill out and watch you. I'm not doing it all myself. <laughs> okay, what am I doing next? Broccoli's done. So the broccoli's done. I'll get you to do the onion, as, I, as it's the easiest one to cut. And you don't want to try today? That too. Yeah. I'm particularly vulnerable to that, I think. And how uh, do you want these this cut? So if you cut it in half and then... Yeah, like that. And then if you turn it on its side, so flat side down, and if you cut sort of 45 degree angle just along that each is. one, so slightly, slightly like that. I have cooked before, by the way. <laughs> oh, slightly this. like that, yeah. Okay, I have done like this before. Just adds different shape, means it just looks a little nicer when it's cooked. And I'll start on the carrots. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing to this carrot now is a cut called julienne, Ooh. which is basically a sort of matchstick shape, about matchstick size, uh, which means that you can just cook faster, looks nicer, a little bit more uniform. 
uniform is something that you uh, know a lot about, isn't it? Something I had to get, get to grips with quite quickly, I think. So, tell me, why did you choose to become a chef, particularly in the forces? So I've always enjoyed cooking. I come from a family of seven. That's my four brothers, my parents, and then my extended family, I lose count of. So I've always had to cook for quite a few people and I've always enjoyed it. So I just, so I just figured might as well do it professionally. And then I've always wanted to join the forces as well. What's that? It's just something that's always appealed to me. I think the, the nobility and the sort of, again, the uniformity of everything is just something that's, you can't really get anywhere else. So I figured might as well give it a go. Merged See how it's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is looking very fancy. It's not too. This is quite rough. It doesn't need to be too precise. But it's just making sure that they're all relatively similar size. Uh, so not only does it look nice aesthetically, but they'll cook at the same time, and also they'll cook, cook quite quickly, won't they? Because they are so skinny. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you don't cook them for too long, then it'll they'll still remain somewhat crisp. So it's still got a little bit of a bite to it. If you just make sure when you're cutting the rest of it, it's just about the same size. It's quite a lot of waste though. It is, but you can use that, you can boil it up in a stock, make a vegetable stock for it. Uh, we won't today, we'll just be using a powdered chicken stock. Shall I get all the pepper? If you want, yeah, yeah, that'd be great help. Right, and now I'm doing this one. So if you cut the top and the bottom off. Like this? Like that, exactly, yeah. See, you're a natural. Oh, we're natural. Maybe you should join. <laughs> okay. There you go. And then it's if like you. Like a belly button. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the most attractive part of the pepper, but if you want to cut around there and try and get the insides out, we don't want to be eating those. Any tips on like certain knives to use or equipment in the kitchen? Preferably a sharp one. Okay. Usually if you get your own, so this is my own knife, if you get your own, it just helps much more. You can keep on top of it, make sure it's sharp, as long as no one nicks it or you've got your back turned. Is that something you need to have, your own knives, while you're working here? No, they, they, there's knives supplied. Uh, but it's just, you can, getting your own knife, you can sort of cater to your own needs. Got red onion all over my hand. Um, right, inside is out. There you go. Now what? So what you, what you want to do now is just cut in half, stood up like that. And then... Oh, it's sharp. And then using this, sort of, so you maybe trim it off the bottom and then just... And then just cut along. Like that. And then, so, turn it this way. So it's going to be a similar size to what the carrot is and just cut along like that. Well, I'm glad you've got that comparison for me. There you go. Helping hand. Yeah, they do. And I'll start on the ginger while we I have wait. never thought about how I'm cutting my veg so much in my life. I know, it's something you've got to get used to, but something I think is quite rewarding. So, on a daily basis, what sort of things do you cook for people on base? It can be anything, really. We tend to have to do a few dishes for the core. So we'll do usually, say like a lasagna or a pasta bake, then maybe something like chicken thighs. And then we'll do a veggie option as well. So something like this, for example, but just minus the chicken. So we've got, and then we'll have a few sides like rice, potatoes, a few veg. So it's mostly things that you can do in bulk. Uh I'm a lot of the time, yeah, yeah. If you're doing like functions, that's where you learn the, the real skills behind cooking. And how does it work in terms of learning all of this? Do you go to classes? Do you have like one-to-one? -one? How does it work? It's, uh, so a lot of the time, if you haven't done anything and then you need to do it on the day, there's people there who've been in for longer. They can help you out. And you, if you know what you're doing beforehand, I'd recommend YouTube. YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> I've used it once or twice. Do you have a favourite dish that you've learned since being here? I think my favourite probably, it's more of a dessert, 
but it's Bavarian cream, so I don't know if you've had them before. Never heard of that. No? What is it? It's sort of a mixing a custard and cream together, and then it sets into this sort of somewhat creamy, almost yogurt, but much more fancy. And it's delicious in my home. It's really good, yeah. Very. Right. When I make it, anyway. <laughs> okay, how long have you been with the REF? So, the day that I first went to my initial training was about seven months ago. So it's not, it's not been particularly long. So you're a newbie? Yeah, yeah. And how has life changed? It's been quite good. I think I've learned to be much more independent. I've been away from home a lot. But then it's, it's something that I've come to grips with quite quickly. And I just overall enjoy the independence. You get thought of much more as an adult when you're in. So you've got less pampering from your, from your parents and your grandparents. Is that a bit of a shocker to begin with? Oh, I think it's quite good, to be fair. Oh, well, it's good, okay. Yeah, but... Do your own washing? Do your own washing, yeah. Your own cooking? Your own cooking. If you want, unless, of course, go to the mess. You keep saying it. What is that, the mess? So the mess is like the, the canteen. Okay. It's the... I think the army call it the scoff house. It's just where you go and get your, uh, your food. So it's, it's what I'd be cooking in, for example. Is it a candy? Yeah, exactly, that's the one. And these okay? Yeah, they're great, yeah, thank perfect, you. they're perfect, but they're okay? No, they're good. They'll be good enough anyway. So what I'm doing here is just cutting the ginger really finely. I've taken the skin off, so that'll go back in the little wastage bowl. And then we'll do the garlic to a similar sort of, a similar sort of grain so to speak and then we'll add a little bit of salt and we'll just paste it through to get a nice a nice sort of paste and people have noticed there's a pot already on the stove or hob whatever you want to call it um why is that there so that pot is for the broccoli as we mentioned earlier the when you said about tender stem the tender stem will cook quite quickly but this broccoli just being normal broccoli requires a bit of a a bit of a blanche beforehand just to cook through, for example, like the, quite the tough stem, just so it's not really too crunchy when you eat it. And you use the word blanched. What is that? So it's just partially, partially boiling it. It's doing it so it's not completely cooked through, but so it, so it just aids it when you're frying it up, for example. And then it will be a similar sort of time to all the other vegetables. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Take about the same length as the tender stem. Now, I know, spoiler alert, we're going to be using this today, a wok. Why are we using a wok, not a frying pan? So the wok just allows, it just allows you to cook more in it, obviously, because it's much deeper, but also just evenly cooking it, being able, because of its shape, you can kind of toss it about and throw it around in there. Just a much easier thing to cook with. Also, it's fun. It's also fun, yeah. That, and also. So here what I'm doing is now that I've cut the garlic to the sim similar size, I'm gonna add some salt to it and the salt will help turning it into a bit of a paste. It's Are we salt, using, right? so if you've got really fine salt there, you wouldn't use like sea salt? Look at the lamb salt. I think, yeah, fine salt's usually easier. Usually just a finer grit. Uh, you could use some sea salt if it's, if you crushed it down a bit more. But it's, it's, it is a bit coarse, so it's slightly difficult to do. So what you want to do is just do that along the edge. Well, I imagine people who are watching this, who may be having an introduction into cooking, might not have a pestle and water either, so they can bother what you're doing here. It's much easier, I think. The garlic, the ginger, it's a little bit tough, so it takes a little bit more of an effort to get through it, but... Does it matter at what time you do your season? Not really, I mean, ideally it's more towards the end, I think. Obviously now it's, the salt's just kind of acting as a sort of way to get it to crush down, really. 
but salt and pepper for example is just better off at the end so you don't so it doesn't kind of disappear throughout but obviously with boiling the broccoli for example I did put some salt in so that when the water cooks the broccoli the salt will go add more flavor to the broccoli my grandma used to do that with all her veg you can do it with yeah, we'd go around there and be like oh salt for that salt in that <laughs> a little bit too much yeah a little bit too much would you like me to put the broccoli in the water that would be great yeah, yeah? thank you i feel a bit useless otherwise Sam. and how long we need probably in there uh, you want it to so you want to be able to with a small knife put the knife in the stalk and then when it kind of falls off it's that should be long enough. Do you do a lot of experimenting with your cooking and just throw things in randomly? Do you always stick to a recipe? Sometimes I do that when I'm cooking for myself. I won't, I won't, I won't do that at the mess, for example, at the canteen, but... So we follow a lot of recipes, but... But for myself, if I think it would improve it. Would you urge people who are watching this who maybe are new to cooking to experiment or just start off by following recipes closely to get that confidence? I think, yeah, I think starting off with, uh, with just recipes is helpful. Uh, it means you can learn what ingredients go together well, uh, which is what I initially did when I was cooking at home. And then I, start, I started, as I cooked more, I was more able to understand what went well together and then yeah, and be able to improvise a lot of stuff from my mum's leftovers as well, which is, tends to be handy. She, she appreciates that a lot as well. Bubble yeah. and squeak. So what I've never had that though. never had bubble and squeak? It's not very nice. It doesn't sound very appetising. Mashed up yeah. and boxing day. Yeah. Not very. Okay, what are we doing now? So next, I think we should wash our hands again. Yeah. Just get the, I've got a lot of sticky garlic I've on me. I've got onion on me. And then we'll wipe down, clean down, and then we can get the chicken out and then just start cooking it off. So the chicken, to remind you, is in the refrigerator at the moment, covered over after I wonderfully chopped it up. So the chicken's out of the fridge, the broccoli's been blanched and actually you tied it up a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, I just cut the ends of the stalks on just so they're a little bit shorter. And also any, any ones that are a little bit too big, just cut them in half. Okay, so now we're gonna fry some chicken? So now we'll start cooking, yeah. Fantastic, I'll take this stuff over here for you. Thank you. I will be watching now. Watching and learning. I use coconut oil when I'm at home. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Is that something you use? I like I like olive oil. I think olive oil is my favourite. Yeah. Right. Anything else you need, you can tell. I'm gonna go over there. That's all right. Yeah. Right. So the first step, just to get a little bit of oil in the pan, maybe about a tablespoon or so. Does it have some what flame you've got? Do you need a, a high flame, high heat? Load. Ideally quite hot, yeah, because it's, it's mostly just, it's a really quick, a really quick cooking, just cook like around the vegetables. You still want it to have a little bit of a crunch on the inside. I think they call it al, al dente. Al dente. Mm. So tell me, what is your least favourite thing that you've ever made that you thought, but? My I've least favourite thing. That's probably something called potato fondant. Potato fondant? Yeah. Is that a pudding? Believe it or not, no. It's uh, a potato that's it's cut really specifically to be a, like a perfect circle, and then you fry the bottom of it in garlic and thyme, and then you stick it in chicken stock in the oven for a good long time. And it's a lot of effort for something that I don't really like. <laughs> what with that one then? Yeah, I won't be making that one again. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to start frying off the chicken. Hold on, this fat can not pass. No, no, it's getting really hot. There you go. So you want the oil nice and hot before you put it in so it sizzles? Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just really want to cook it well. Obviously, be careful because it might stick. Yeah, it might do a little bit, yeah. I think mostly with the chicken, for example. Oh, <laughs> oh that's kind of hot. So now that we've got the chicken, you just want to cook the edges enough just so it's, it's cooked all round. How's cooky so it just looks like? It is, yeah, well, I thought I'd... That's that more the egg? The hot pan yeah. for, yeah. 
So I'm gonna let the steamed chicken go that right back with. Yeah, it'll take it'll, it'll still take a little while. You don't want to cook it all the way through completely. If there's something that you really want to learn how to make, but you haven't yet had to start to try. I think to to make some like a lot of baking, I think I'd quite like to improve in my baking. I think making larger, more elaborate cakes would be quite a good thing to learn. So there you go. If I can get you to stir that one, so yeah. I'll grab these. What is that bit? You'd hope so, wouldn't you? So now you're putting the soy sauce in? We've got to add a little bit of soy sauce in, yeah. Maybe about a teaspoon or so. Does it matter which order you put the kind of paste in, the soy sauce or the honey? Does it matter? Uh, not particularly, no. Uh, I think ideally following one sort of way, would it would be helpful, but be, it tends to taste the same. Towards the other end. And do you need to constantly keep this weed in so it doesn't burn? Yeah, because it's so hot, it needs it needs a lot of that. Yeah, I'm going to put one tablespoon of honey in. I put honey in all my cooking. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll get another spoon. Take it off there. What kind of cooking do you do, Owen? Then, what do you like um, to cook? Well. I'm living with my parents at the moment, so uh, I let mum do the majority. <laughs> That's what I do that um, at home. So if I do, I'll do like um, salmon, veg, chicken and veg, yeah. fajitas, our firm favourite. Yeah, so I'm just going to add the carrots in there. But now I'll do this one. Oh, it's really hot. Yeah, it's a little bit of the rice vinegar. We can turn it down a tiny bit now that the chicken's cooked. Here we go. And then next thing, because when we're cooking the vegetables, ideally you cook them from densest first. So the carrots, for example, the most dense, cook them first, let them cook for about a minute or so, and then you can add other things like the peppers, onions. And the broccoli ideally last because the florets, you don't want them to cook too much. So. On a day-to-day -day basis, then, you cook for people in the mess. Um, do you do any, like, courses, or is there any qualifications you can achieve? Yeah, so at the moment, I'm on a, on a cooking apprenticeship, which I'm carrying from my training to here. So, so there's a requirement to cook, sort of make, make certain different dishes, uh, for example, meat dishes, pastry, and then, and then you get them ticked off. And then once they can see that you're qualified enough to cook all these different dishes, then they can grind you that apprenticeship. We'll stick, now I'll stick the onion in. And of course, you love being in the forces, but if do, people yeah. got their qualifications here and then wanted to go and do something different, open their own restaurant, is yeah. that possible? Yeah, they can, yeah, they can take it, they can take it out uh, onto, just normal civilian jobs, become a civilian chef. It's something that's it's quite versatile. When they give you the apprenticeship, it's just, it's, you've got the apprenticeship, it's just there. And outside of cooking, what do you do in your spare time? So I like a lot of outdoor activities. I like hiking. Uh, I like to go fishing where I can. I'm not the best at it, but... <laughs> So with that outdoorsy kind of nature, does the RAF support you with all of that? Yeah, so the RAF has uh, all sorts of different sports that they can that you can join. You can they can take you abroad for it. They can give you some instructional like uh, qualifications. So I'll stick I'll stick some of the broccoli in now. So does that mean you're going to become a fishing instructor in the future? Uh, that would be good, <laughs> ideally. So now that the broccoli's in, we'll just cook that off for a little bit and then we'll add the, the ginger and the garlic. That's what would you serve this with? Well, you could have noodles running through it. Yeah. You could have... Rice? Rice, you could have rice if you wanted. It's, it's down to you really, it's just 
personal preference for a lot of it. You're gonna have to take over my arms aching. That's all right. <laughs> you can do some cool tricks as well, I'm sure. Oh, it's cooking nicely. It's getting there now, yeah. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add the ginger and the garlic. If you do need me to help you stir, I can. I think I'll be all right for now. Okay. And then we'll just cook that through a little bit. Can you do a little? I can, I can, I can try. Hey. I'm not the best at it, mind you. There you go. So now we'll add some water and chicken stock. You've just got the powdered chicken stock there. Do you have to use chicken stock or could you use a different type? You can use any stock you want. Obviously, it, it, again, if it was a vegetable, a vegetable one, you could use just vegetable stock. If you were cooking it with beef, beef stock really down to your own personal taste. I wish you could smell this. The viewers at home could smell so delicious. And it's so colorful, you were right about using the red. Yeah, and the broccoli brings it out with the, the green. I think the peppers as well. I didn't so, notice either, we didn't mention it. I didn't cry with the onions. Did you not? No, I didn't. I'm glad I Clearly I'm hardcore. <laughs> I'm glad you did it, not me. <laughs> so I've just turned the heat up there just to uh, evaporate a bit of the moisture off. So you mentioned that you moved away to your home and you've become very much independent because of that. Um, how far have you moved and what's it like not living at home? So originally I'm from like Durham area. Okay. So it is, it's a, a, decent, a decent way, uh, not too far. There's, a, there's further places I could go. So it's nice to be able to travel home every now, every once and again. Did you get to choose the base that you wanted to? Work so yeah, you get to when you when you finish your uh, specialist training, they'll give you a sheet and you fill in what bases ideally you have and like your reasons for going there, and then and then they'll work that around. Obviously, who they need to send where, what availabilities they have, and then hopefully. You then get where you want to go. Did you get the one you wanted? I wasn't when I when they asked me. I wasn't really. Well, bothered. I was. I wasn't bothered. No. <laughs> I just want to do my cooking. I don't exactly. care. I was am. like, yeah. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Near in the end there. I'll turn that down a little Got bit. Some beans in there would be really nice, wouldn't they? I think bean well, sprouts as well. Yeah. You could literally just add anything. From the fridge. Yeah. Any vegetables you want, yeah. really. Yeah. We go. So now it's near the end there. Okay, so let's put the stock in. Where we have we put the cornflour in yet? So the cornflour, that's just uh, to thicken the sauce if it needs thickening. Okay. But I like the consistency as it is now. It's it's not too liquid, but there's still you can see a lot of moisture in. So if yours looks like this, you don't need to add the cornflour. If no, it's yeah. more watery, then you do. It is. It's a another thing for personal preference as well. So if if you if you want a bit more liquid in it, by all means, add more liquid. But if you want it to be thicker, you can just add a slake it down, get a bit of corn flour in a bowl, add a little bit of water and mix it up so it's all dissolved, and then add that to it, and it should thicken. Something that my mum always says is you can always add, but you can't take away. Exactly. Yeah. Is that a key bit of chefing advice? That is very good. Yeah, yeah. Like seasoning, bit by bit, yeah. and then you'll be safe. So yes, I'll play this up now. Oh, it's nearly time for the taste test. Whoop. But it looks and smells amazing. This might be a bit of an odd one, but you could add maybe sesame seeds on top. You could do, yeah. Could do. Maybe a bit of parsley as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's the... Cool, it looks delicious. Ready? Tuck in. It's got a bit of chicken in it. Wow. That'd be pretty good. For the taste again. A few minutes work. Mm. This is definitely worth doing. Well, I love how versatile this dish is, how easy and quick it is to make, and how delicious it is too. Arthur, thank you very much for showing us how to make thank a chicken stir fry.
My brother-in-law, this is weird, he has his curry with pasta. Mmm. He doesn't like rice. Something I have to try.